If you think managing a project is as simple as gathering a team, distributing tasks around and motivating them toward achieving the goal, you're wrong. When a team works on a project, controlling the team's progress, resources and staying on top of all the deadlines is essential and exhausting. To handle the responsibilities and stay updated on all the changes, we have some tips you can use. Don't go anywhere, as we're about to share the secrets of successfully managing a project using Kanban capacity control. What is capacity? The team's capacity is the ability to achieve the project's goal, complete a certain number of tasks, or produce a certain amount of workload across a specific time period or a project. Capacity planning is one of the most critical aspects of planning and working on a project. Capacity control is therefore essential to planning your project successfully and reaching the project goal. How to estimate and control the team's capacity? To control your team's capacity, you need to get a thorough insight into your team's capacity. This is done using throughput, cumulative flow diagrams, burn down or burn up charts, and other metrics. Setting work in progress limits will help the team not to overstep their capacity and accept only the workload that they can deliver successfully. Throughput lets the team and project manager know just how many items are being successfully delivered at any given time. To get to the throughput formula, Take the work in progress average and multiply it by the average cycle time. As for the cumulative flow program or CDF, it is used to overlook the progress made during the project every step of the way. And let the team know whether the project is coming along as planned, better than planned or falling behind. Sometimes it is also referred to as a burn up chart. On our channel you can find all about burn up and burn down charts, we'll leave a link to the video below. It's also beneficial to know the lead time. If you want to stay in control of your team's capacity and better manage it, use Kanban swim lanes. In Kanban, we use vertical columns that can be adjusted to show the production process. The simplest way to start with Kanban is to use three columns, to do, doing, and done. However, you can also add more columns depending on the project and your production process. To control capacity better, you can add horizontal columns to your Kanban board which gives it resemblance of a swimming pool and create the so-called Kanban swim lanes. These horizontal columns or Kanban swim lanes have the purpose of helping you distinguish between different types of work or tasks using visual cues. You can add a swim lane for each part of the production process or client or a swim lane for each team. This will allow your team to grasp the production process better and by separating these categories it will also be easier to oversee different aspects of the project. Capacity control with Kanban is done by managing work in progress or WIP. We've got you covered on that topic with a whole video we've already made, so take a moment to check it out on our channel and get detailed info on the topic. By not overstepping the limits that you have set to WIP, you'll always have sufficient resources for making progress on a project. Now to answer a burning question. What if your team lacks capacity? Situations when you have overestimated the team's abilities can happen, especially when working on a project that you cannot compare to previous projects, or witnessing some unexpected changes in the team as members come and go. If your team lacks capacity and it shows clearly on the burn up chart or CDF, it is important to do something about it ASAP. You can get another team on board to help with a project if you work in a bigger organization or company or redistribute tasks so the team can handle all the workload more efficiently. Pairing up team members is also a great idea when senior members can provide guidance and expertise, especially to team members facing an obstacle in completing certain tasks. Once it's obvious that the team will not manage the workload, it's time to communicate this clearly to the client or stakeholders. Notify them in a timely manner of the progress made and perhaps push the deadlines forward. The great thing about capacity control and capacity planning is that it gives everyone involved in the project confidence that the project will be successfully finished. It helps the team and managers know how much value or product they can deliver and gives the clients and stakeholders an idea of what they can expect and when they can expect the project to be finished. Capacity control prevents the team from getting too much on their plate which can lead to burnout or too little on their plate which can lead to boredom. To keep the wheels turning and the team happy and working on an optimal number of tasks, capacity control is the key. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. See you soon. Kanban capacity control. Ugh. Throughput lets the team and project... Ma See you soon.